My name is Leon Lawson, and uh, I'm running for governor of Washington State. And what made you want to run for governor? Well, back in 2017, uh, well, I've owned a business since 2011, but back in 2017, we had purchased uh, some property next door and we were moving. And uh, I contacted the Department of Licensing and I was working with them on moving and they ended up, somebody there decided they didn't like us and they shut us down. They started sending agents out and targeting us. At the time, we didn't know what was going on. Uh, we had Facebook flooded with negative comments. We had people accusing us of, of using and selling drugs. We had, and then when we called the state, we didn't get much help. In fact, they started to intensify their attacks. Still didn't know why. Eventually, I got ran out of business. It took them about four months to run us out of business, but they were slandering us to customers. They were, uh, they were reporting false crimes. And these are people that work at the Department of Licensing. So I, I didn't know what was going on. I had to close my business. Uh, I was dead broke. I was living up in my house and I was getting behind on every bill. Uh, so I started getting uh, Freedom of Information Act requests and I put in uh, my business name and my name and man, I started getting documents. And what I found in there was crazy. I'd say 80%, the, the amount of information you can get from these things is amazing. Uh, but I'd say 80% of the people in the Department of Licensing honestly did nothing but target people all day and play on Facebook. Uh, I asked for help. They didn't give me any. In fact, they extorted me. I turned them in for the extortion. Uh, nobody cared. In fact, they cashed a check that said extortion fee on it. <laughs> huh. I wish this was a joke, but these people were acting under the color of law. They were actually, uh, they were actually agents that went out and could shut down businesses for the Department of Licensing. And uh, they, so some whistleblowers came out for me and they reported it all. We got all the whistleblowers, we got all their statements. Even these people admitted to doing it on record because they had no fear of getting in trouble. So anyway, I took them to court pro se. I learned how to do law myself. I didn't have any money. So I learned all about it. And uh, I actually re realized that learning law was a lot easier than most video games or card games or things that most people do. <laughs> so we took them to court in Thurston County Superior Court and we won. But before I did that, I put a preponderance of evidence. I put all this stuff on the court records. I wanted it all out there. I wanted everybody to know what was going on. And, uh, you know, the, the more I dug and the further I went into it, the worse it got. And pretty soon I realized that, you know, my voice wasn't really loud. And there was a lot of other people out there that were going through the same kind of thing and no one was really listening. So I, got, I, I won the lawsuit. Obviously, they had to pay me. It could have been a whole lot more money, but I settled because I knew I could do this, and I was going to run for governor, and I was going to take these guys out. Because after dealing with them, I realized they're not really that smart. Uh, I, I called Inslee for help. I called Sheldon for help. I sent them emails. They actually sent me back emails saying they were going to help me, and then they, allowed, they, they went and asked the same people that were targeting me and coming after me to investigate themselves. Huh. Office of Risk Management did an investigation into them. They went in there. They were, they, they, it blew their mind. One of the guys actually had to call me on the side and tell me, buddy, I never seen anything like this. You're just going to have to litigate. <laughs> Later on, I realized it was because uh, I, I, I live in a small town and I own a business here and I, I talk to everyone. Everybody knows who I am. Well, I openly supported the president and I was kind of open about politics. Before that, I didn't care about politics. But once Trump ran, I thought, I, I thought that was crazy, you know, so... I started getting into it, and before that, I thought it was all controlled anyway, and we didn't have much of a voice. And I, but I thought the people that were in control actually cared about us, maybe a little, you know. But once I found out what they were doing, and you start tying, I mean, it's all there, you know. There's a lot of people that know what's going on, and a lot of them are staying quiet about it, and it's scary. And you know that they, they really don't care. Uh, you start getting into the realm of people looking at you like you're a conspiracy theorist, but the problem is, is I have these documents. This is all official stuff on public record. I mean, none of this is hidden from anyone. The only ones hiding it are the TV, which is all anybody watches, you know, or, you know, you got your Facebook and your Google, and that all appears to be working in conjunction with each other, if you know what I'm saying. So they targeted you because you were a Trump supporter? Well, I, you know, and at the Day, at the end of the day, tying that, tying it to that exactly, hard to say. But there's a lot of coincidence. They targeted me for something. I never got to the bottom of it. I, but people can make their own decisions because 
they actually put on record that they were actively trying to run me out of business. The people who would actively put that on the record in interviews that were done by uh, by the state because they had to do interviews after the whistleblowers came. Forward. Are they are they still targeting you or what's going on now with this? No, they were up until I'd say November because I, I held out. I, I filed I filed a complaint, but I didn't file the lawsuit right away because I wanted to wait. See, I'm kind of a strategic person, so I waited because I, I filed the claim. I let them kind of run around and try to cover their tracks, but I was getting the, the FOIAs. So I got all their per personal emails between each other. I got all their uh, plans. I got everything they were doing, everything they were looking into. Um, they're the most racist people I've ever seen if you start reading it. It's, it's amazing the open conversations they have. There's tons of drug abuse going on and they openly talk about it in their emails. Um, I, I don't know what else to tell you. If you've ever ran with some people that you feel are like kind of shady and don't want to be around them, that's the employees of the pool. So that was scary to me. I have a business and I'm like, if this continues, man, I mean, what's the point? What's the point of doing any of it if the people in charge don't care and they're gonna just actively run anyone they want to out of business? So I learned a lot, I learned a lot. And I felt like uh, if I didn't do it, I couldn't trust that anyone else was, was gonna do it. They, they've got too much to hide. All the people that are connected to it and the mismanagement, if anything, all the people connected to the mismanagement are going to attempt to try and push it under the rug. And that's not going to happen. We have to have transparency in order to correct this. So what kind of experience would you be bringing to this job? I think you kind of touched on as being a small business owner. Yeah, uh, I'm in the auto business. And, you know, obviously I've dealt with the bureaucracy, the Department of Licensing. Uh, I've dealt with all the, <laughs> I'd say I dealt with every aspect of the, of the government overreach um, as far as just getting zoned. Uh, you know, there's a lot to that. I, I, I'm a really strong decision maker. I learn extremely quick. Right? And what I be my strong decision maker is uh, I research what I'm doing. I lay it all out. I can explain it. I'm transparent and I love to take people's uh, suggestions in. And I love criticism. Criticism shows me angles that I, I, I don't see. I don't always have all the answers, but I'm the type of person that can come to a conclusion because I know how to use every resource around me to do it. Sometimes it doesn't benefit myself to do that, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a fact-based person and I like, I like truth and I like to solve problems. Um, it seems like everything can be solved by common sense. It's not coincidence that they divide us by party, you know? They seem like half of the, obviously every single, I'd say 90% of us are right down the middle, but we get so frustrated thinking that there's no way to change it, that we're forced to pick a side. Both sides have extremities and they exploit them in order to make everybody fall in line. So there's a lot to be fixed and it's gonna require, I guess you can say, I guess you can say it's a marathon, but, uh, if we don't start and work together and the people aren't involved and and because right now let's face it nobody knows what's going on i don't even know exactly how i'm going to fix everything because i don't know the damage currently being done by this administration i have a feeling this administration doesn't plan on staying in office that's why he was doing the uh the presidential runs i think that they figure he's probably burned his bridge he has nothing to lose and uh they're looking to put someone else in there that's going to and what I mean by they is, you know, the same corporate interests, the ones that are looking for pardons when they abuse the uh, system, the ones that uh, want to make sure that they control the, the upper echelons of power. And there's just no way your mainstream Republican or Democrat parties aren't involved in that because it comes down to the money every time. So if elected, what would be your legislative priorities or administrative priorities? Well, honestly, it would be I would probably go into most of these state uh, agencies, Department of Licensing. Uh, uh, L and I, and I would assess whose jobs are really necessary. Who's playing on Facebook all day? If I figured it out, I could have I could have a pool of guys go through there. Why not go through find out which? Because these people aren't happy people. These are miserable people, and I blame it on their jobs and their work environment. Uh, we could go in there and we could give these people two hundred grand to eliminate their job, and it would save us money at this point. I mean, if we went in there and we were like, look. We'll give you this huge chunk of money if you agree to just go off and do something else and uh, help us eliminate this job. 
there's so much there that's just not needed. All these with the with the technology they have nowadays, there's so much in the car business that's not needed. I mean, I understand they're they're making money on it, but then where's the money going? Why do we need to make all this money for them to waste it on the crap they're wasting it on? It's like the more you follow it, the more it's crazy. They 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 say, okay, illegal aliens, they're they're criminals because they're here illegally. And that's I guess that's correct. If you follow federal law, you're right. They're here illegally and they're criminals. Well, selling marijuana is illegal federally. So the marijuana dealers are now criminals too. Well, they're criminals if the state says. So it's another form of leverage they can use over these guys to fall on the line or else. Guess what? It's federally illegal and we're going to pull your card. So at the end of the day, the state operates a lot like a gang. People don't see it, but that's how the Taliban started. That's how, that's how all the drug cartels started. They started with the government reaching in and controlling who can do what and using leverage over these over these uh different businesses and that's what they were doing to the car dealers the department of licensing would almost force the car dealers to break the law in order to operate and then that way they could come in anytime they want and say you're breaking the law it doesn't matter if they forced you to do it that's not how the system works so one of the biggest issues right now is this uh, coronavirus pandemic how would you have handled it well, if you want to be honest, uh, I think most of us know what's going on with the coronavirus. Uh, <laughs> we have coronavirus every year. I, it seems there's no concern about it. Um, but this coronavirus is a specific one, um, COVID-19, I believe, right? Yeah, and, and, it, It's a different one. We can go into the science for it all day long, and we can, uh, we can debate whether or not uh, somebody did this wrong, somebody did that wrong. To be, honestly, to be honest, they did everything wrong. There's no reason that... I, when I call PayPal and ask them for help, they say they can't answer the phones because of the coronavirus. That doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. They're really lying to people and trying to get them divided. They're trying to start a war. I mean, look at what they're doing. There's, <laughs> they control the media, so they control what you see. They're creating outrage on both sides. You watch one news media, it's orange man's bad. All these people are bad. You watch the other side, it's orange man's good. The Democrats are all criminals and, uh, you know, doing all this crap. Now, you have to wonder with all the <laughs> with all the drugs and the crime and everything that we know runs rampant, um, it can be stopped. The amount of surveillance we have nowadays, the amount of tracing they have. I mean, they're following you around, tracing you to see if you're you've got a cold or a sickness. Why can't they trace the fentanyl? It's because they don't want to, and that's what sucks. Is the deeper you go, the more you realize that s somehow we let the worst people get in charge. But it, and then, and then you break it down more and you're like, well, it makes sense. The ones that have the most dirt, the ones that take the most, the ones that are the most compromised are going to be the easiest to have them do what the corporate interest wants. It's easy. You take the money or we expose all the other crap that we have on you. So, I mean, it's not hard to figure out where, how we got here. And the people that think that Jay Inslee's, uh, you know, just a normal guy and that he's just going on with his life and that. You know, his daughter just happens to work for Bill Gates and, you know, all that stuff just there's, you know, there's no crony capitalism and there's no special interest. And I mean, ask yourself, does that really make sense? I mean, all of our lives, these people have lied to us. All of us know it. Just none of us think we can do anything about it. So I've been asking each one of the uh, governor candidates about their feelings about um, President Trump because, you know, he is the, the president. Well, well, think about this all my life. OK, so I like marijuana. When I was young, I was told oh, you shouldn't smoke that. You're a criminal. You need to eat these pills the doctors give you. You need to do this. You need to, uh, you know, all this stuff. I was like, man, this doesn't seem quite right. How come we're allowed to just pump sugar into people all day long? How come we're allowed to have all this bad food go around unchecked? How come they're not teaching people about civics in school? How come nobody knows the law? How come they're teaching us backwards on how to actually succeed? Those people have been in charge my whole life. So the minute someone comes in and those people were their enemy, the line's drawn because the same people that I think have been controlling us and against us our whole life are now guns blazing after this dude. Like they want him out. This is not their friend. That, that, that keeps me digging. And the more I look, you know, most of the stuff that he does is I think probably in the interest of either stirring up people's awareness of what was happening before or trying to, I don't know. I mean, some of it doesn't make sense to me either, but I don't know everything. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. There's so much information none of us have, and we're basing it off of what other people tell us. 
And that's why I invite people to just back up, you know, shut it all down for a minute, look around, just, just kind of just forget what everyone else is telling you and do your own research and think, just think about everything kind of logically for a minute. And, and you really start to see the big picture. It's like coming, it's like coming off of an alcohol binge. You start sitting there for a minute, you have this moment of clarity. It's like the internet is a constant hypnotic trance that keeps people focused on things that don't really matter to your daily enjoyment of life. So at the end of it, when you think you get to the place that you're chasing, you realize that you actually missed all the good times. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I mean, but what is that bigger picture that you're seeing? I'm seeing uh, Washington State not having a homeless crisis for one because it'd be completely avoided. If you look at the map, okay, so we spend a lot of money on climate change. We spend a lot of money. I mean, you look at the amount of money they spend, figure out how many uh, citizens are actually in Washington, which is kind of a hard thing to gauge because they're not very transparent with the numbers. Uh, I, I think that's part of the reason they did the stimulus check was it was the White House way of doing a census. Everyone with the social security number sent it in. So I think they were trying to gauge, you know, how many people there are because let's face it, it's pretty easy to make a false identity these days. And with some of the information I was covered in the FOIAs, they really like to issue driver's license of people that aren't real. There's, there's a lot of people that work in the state that may have two or three of those driver's licenses of different names attached to bank accounts, Facebook accounts. Might even lead to votes. But who prosecutes it? If someone doesn't prosecute it, then it doesn't matter. And if uh, the corporate interests get one of the guys in, well, they can just be pardoned over and over again. Just keep on doing it. So a lot of the stuff we're seeing, I think, right now is somebody, and I don't know who, trying to show us how bad it was, how all the crimes have been committed our whole lives. And uh, they're using people's division of Trump to try to bring both sides together to see that our whole lives, it's been a mess, truly. I saw in the uh, your voters pamphlet, your um it's a statement that you mentioned, um, I believe it is the uh, where we go, when we go all acronym. Sorry, I forget how to say it. It's very long. <laughs> um, are you a supporter of the uh, QAnon movement? Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you asked about that. Um, I am. And it's actually open source, too. If you go if you go to the uh, DOD and you go to the military DTMs and you look under DTM 17004, you will find that it's a uh, civilian workforce. And then you'll also find that that is actually the cyber department. What the military did is they decided that they were going to launch a uh, campaign to get Americans involved in a cyber campaign. And I think it was partly to uh, maybe counter the media's narrative. And I invite people that you know, haven't looked into it to look into it. There is some information in there that's not true, but a lot of it was probably put there in order to you know, I think they were trying to follow information sources, find out what they were using to spread information, um, get to the bottom of a lot of these complicated algorithms that have been controlling what we buy, what we see, you know, to the end, if you really get into it, they control our reality almost. If you're, if you're an internet person or if you haven't affect your life at all or your information or your views on life. Um, so basically it kind of, it kind of just, if you, if you start going through it, it it's basically, it's written and the way that, the way it's been done is you can tell this is this is military this is a military grade uh information war and it's there's an irregular warfare dtm in there too and i believe it's dtm 19 something if you go to that website all the dtms are there they're all active you can, you can read through them and see what the military is doing uh Part, the, the media is not, you can't get the media to talk about Q. They won't do it. They refuse to mention Q. And the reason is, is because the real information about what it is kind of blows the lid off everything. Um, I mean, I don't. Where would you suggest people start to find out more information about this? I know it's like a, it's like a huge, it's a huge ball of information. <laughs> Want, it, it, people should go to QAnon.pub, and that's all the drops that uh, some patriots, they do this out of their own money. Nobody collects money. Nobody does. All these guys do this for free. You've got 
thousands and thousands of patriots that are on there digging through information. Uh, they all work together on some back channel boards and these guys information. So say something comes up and it seems like, uh, like the media is not being over the board with it. These guys with hundreds of people digging information, all the information they can find on the internet and coming together in a collective form, the information gets there quick. I mean, we're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about all the top researchers working together anonymously and not afraid to lay it down the information in order for you to process it and share it. You can double check it, obviously you have to. And, uh, but what you find in there is amazing. The amount of information you can get and the amount of time you can get is unprecedented. I mean, there's so much. Uh, you spend more time verifying that these guys are actually correct, which takes you down rabbit holes of your own. And when you start finding this stuff, you're, you know. But I, I would just suggest people kind of go and start reading the drops, the first ones all the way to the end. Um, and I'm not saying that people should believe everything in the drops, but think of it more like a chess game. It's a strategy, an information war. Uh, we, we had a shadow government, let's face it, half, half, of the, half of the country didn't want to do what Trump's agenda was, and they were inside fighting. I'm not sure if they realized the extent of what they were all doing when they did it, but now that the cards are on the table, they're all looking at treason and you know, losing their jobs is the worst of their problems at this point, I guess you can say. So <laughs> there's a lot of people like that across the government that was just basically listening to their old bosses. you know. Um, so you sh people should go there. Just go to the beginning. It's, it started in October of 17, and you can read through all the drops and kind of go through the timelines. And the, it really exposes how the media kind of prepares their narratives, you know, weeks and months in advance, because these guys will drop information about what the mainstream media is going to start broadcasting. And like clockwork, you know, within a couple of weeks, it's the exact things they were saying was going to happen. So it's pretty clear these guys either are involved with the control of the media information or the media information. I think it, I think it's going to end up coming out that these guys, you know, are CIA high level. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of bad stuff they were doing before. We all know there's a lot of technology and a lot of medical science and a lot of other things they withhold from us under the guise of regulation see so once it comes out that they've been hiding a lot of this stuff from us so that other countries can tax us for things like oil and stuff like that people are going to be pretty pissed off so it's like the information can't just come out all at once people have to kind of get ready for it do you have any uh, final thoughts for our listeners of why they should vote for you Change. You know, I'm one of you guys. I grew up around here. The governor's job, honestly, it's not that complicated. It's to make sure that laws getting done, make sure the criminals aren't getting away with crimes, and to make sure that the legislation's for the people. You know, to veto the stuff that's coming through that just doesn't make sense. I, I mean, that's about it. Make sure that, you know, do the will of the people. You get all these governors coming out here and they're going against the will of the voters. The $30 tab, where's your $30 tabs at? You know, I mean, we even had one of the candidates say that he would not enforce the voter approved gun ban. Now, I don't care if you agree with it or not. I happen to like guns myself. I think people should have guns. I think they should train kids in guns in high school, to be honest with you. But he came out and said he would not enforce the voters approved law. I mean, I don't care if you like the law or not, if it's voter approved. You're kind of stuck. I mean, that's your job is to make sure the, the will of the voters is done. If a mess is made because the voters voted for a mess, well, hey, <laughs> that's wrong. And I actually think that I think that people are so fed up and they've been getting burned by these candidates for so long that they're going to look into it and see change. And at this point, they're like, hey, I want to vote for someone that I think can get elected that uh, is not part of the money crew, you know, because I mean, <laughs> Think about what's happening with China. Think about the, the people that are involved with China. And I think a lot more information is going to come out about certain governors that control certain ports and certain areas that were being very favorable to China at maybe the interest of us. Uh, that's not going to sit well with a lot of people. And the way they're fighting in D.C. and in the, in the politics the way it is right now, you're going to see a lot more dirty information come out. 
because I mean, they're throwing all the mud now on an epic level. I mean, anyone that doesn't see that is crazy. So if people want to learn more about your campaign, where should they go? Well, you can go to uh, my Facebook page, which is Lawson for Gov. Um, you can email me. I love to answer questions for people specifically um, because I, I don't like the cookie cutter answers. I don't like to broadly just spew out what I think the majority of the people need to hear from me. I don't care if people like me. I don't care if people don't like me. What I wanted to know is that I'm going to do the job of governor correctly and that whoever I am and whatever I do isn't important, but I'm going to give you full transparency to watch everything I do in the office. And if I'm doing something wrong, I want people loud. I want it, I want it right because I don't want to be doing this forever. I want term limits. I want to get in there for a couple of years find out what's really going on, show everybody what's going on because I don't have any ties to it. And I can sit there and say, this is what they were doing. So I love information because I think people, each person has information about it that other people don't know. So <laughs> everyone has their own fight with the state. And I'm sure you know what I mean too. Every Everybody's in the bureaucracy. So everyone's got their own angle. And you know when there's nowhere to turn and when you just have to eat it. You know? Sometimes you just have to put on the mask, if you know what I mean. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the interview. You know, a lot of people haven't reached out to me and uh, nobody will debate me. The mainstream Republican Party ignores me. They act like I'm not there. Uh, so if you guys want some change, you know, it's up to you. You've been listening to Talk to Seattle, and I've been your host, Jason Rigdon. If you liked this episode, would you please share it on social media? Most podcast clients have a little share button. Click that and tell people why they should listen. If you want to support Talk to Seattle, would you please give the show a rating and review on iTunes? It really helps new people discover the show, and it makes me happy. Follow Talk to Seattle on Twitter at Talk to Seattle, and email any questions, comments, or suggestions to jasonrigdon at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening.